Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Roding, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the top 13 best SUV sport utility vehicles for less than 7,000 hairs on the doll. Okay, also, really quick, actually, first of all, you guys are probably like, why is he doing this? I don't know. Uh, nobody said to do it or anything like that. I was just like, I have, don't think I've ever made an SUV video, so let's make one. And I also know that $7,000 is a weird price range, and the only real reason why it's at $7,000 is because one of them, I couldn't actually find a listing for less than 5K, and it was like, the closest I could find was 6,000, so I was like, dang, I can't cheat them. And so it's unfortunately 7,000. But yeah, it's a random video, I know, but also something I wanted to bring up, has, have any of you guys ever watched one of those like cringe compilations on YouTube? I always stayed away from them because I thought the idea of a cringe compilation in and of itself was cringy. And I was like, that's so goofy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I watched one, dude, they're the most wild videos I've ever seen. It opened your eyes to the stupidest people in this planet. If you ever feel dumb, if you ever feel useless, if you ever feel like you're wasting your time or, or, or you're, you're a nobody or whatever it may be, watch a cringe compilation and just remember that those are real people man they exist and you will feel 10 million times better about yourself dude you are normal and you are smart and you are cool and those people are not and it just makes you feel amazing go watch them if you haven't already but without further ado let's get right into it with number 30. and here's the car i was talking about earlier uh this is the subaru cross trek first generation specifically because they actually do have two generations of this automobile now but yeah you can actually find these under 5k most of them most of these cars on this list you can find under five thousand dollars but this is the one that i was like i could not find one for less than 5k which was unfortunate i found one for like 6500 but either way they come with a two liter flat four making 148 horsepower in their all-wheel drive i thought that was kind of weird because if anybody i don't know if you guys remember but back in the early 2000s i'm talking foresters impresas everything back then was making 165 i don't know how they they died down but got bigger like this has 148 horsepower what what's the deal what's the deal there right just keep the same motor from before it has more horsepower it was decently reliable like i don't i don't really get it but either way it is incredible at going off-road so i had to put it on the list oh wait is going to the chevy trailblazer my 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 mama my ma had one of these bad boys back in the day it was actually like one of the first vehicles i think i ever remember being in this she had a she she had one of these she had a dodge durango the like first generation durangos and then she also had a jeep grand cherokee but this one i specifically remember as a wee little lad being in they come with a 4.2 liter inline six making 275 horsepower in their all-wheel drive kind of weird a, a straight six making 275 horsepower from the early 2000s doesn't sound right and so maybe i'm wrong there it's so ridiculous dude doing research for some of these videos they'll say exactly what you want you'll be like you'll be like oh what's the engine what's what's the horsepower and they'll say it and then i'll make the video and then the comments will be like yeah that's not right and then i look it up again and it's it they were right it's not right i was like how where did i get that number from but either way I, I hope this is correct it just sounds a little off 11th place however i know is correct because i made a whole video on them and i love these cars it's the honda odyssey second generation i wanted to put this higher because I, I freaking love odysseys bro i think they're so slept on but they don't really they're not they're not an suv you know they're, they're a minivan I, I i wouldn't count them as a sports utility vehicle they're more of like a of a of, of a sports utility van you know which i guess is still an suv so i guess it kind of fits in the, in the range but either way they come with a 3.5 liter v6 making 240 horsepower in their front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. Uh, if you get a first-gen, I think they even came with a K-series, if I'm not mistaken. And they also had a manual transmission in the first-gens. But the second-gens, I, I, I would stick with this. I think the second-gens just look so much nicer. They have so much more modern features in them. I would rather have a second-gen, but the first-gen is more like fun. But you're not buying a freaking Honda Odyssey for fun anyway, let's be real. So it, it, I would stick with the second-gen. 10th place is going to probably like honestly speaking probably one of the most highest appreciating cars of all time the cadillac escalade specifically the second generation of them because you can find these under under 5k nowadays and that is just an absolute steal and a half man i get that people love the tahos and i do too guess who guess who owned a tahoe my mom like, like i get it bro i love the tahos but the escalade is just a better version of them and i'd rather own one of these they come with a six liter v8 making 345 horsepower in their four-wheel drive again it's literally just a tahoe but more luxurious more like exclusive and in my opinion looks a little bit better as well i think the escalades have a more like aggressive nice but like lux ex executive style to them right and i've seen lifted escalades before they those are unbelievably cool ninth place is going to the most unreliable vehicle so far and honestly i think looking at giving myself a quick little look over the list here yeah definitely the most unreliable vehicle on the list the porsche cayenne first generation 
listen, everybody loves Porsche. Everybody does. It, it's a great brand, myself included. But you can't deny the fact that Porsche is, it's, it's a sports car brand. It's a supercar brand, whatever you want to call them. They're not meant made for reliability and they're not notorious for that. This car comes with a 3.2 liter V6, making 247 horsepower in its all wheel drive. Again, it's a Porsche, man. You're not really buying a Cayenne for its reliability. You're buying it for its performance. You're buying it for its luxury, and you're buying it for the status. And and it, it it checks all those boxes. The fact that you can even find one of these for a, a, realistically around six thousand dollars, I would say, is is a steal. It's just like the Escalade. This thing has absolutely depreciated. By coming in at eighth place is going to the Volvo XC90 first generation volvo has an absolute freaking cult following dude they're, they're they're not a video goes by where i don't get a guy in the comments being like oh you should this is a good video man i enjoyed it now do it with volvos it's freaking yeah. hilarious Volvo and Saab. Volvo and Saab. People freaking love them. And I, it makes sense. They're great cars. The car comes with a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline five, making 208 horsepower in its all wheel drive. It's stupidly reliable. I know you, you're probably scared about the fact, oh, it's a turbo motor. Like, turbos are usually unreliable. It's Volvo, okay? The Volvo could put a, a turd as, as, as their induction, and it'd be perfectly fine. It, it would be absolutely fine. And on top of that, it's incredibly safe. You could crash this thing into a tree at 90 miles an hour and be totally fine. So if you're thinking about like ending your life, buy a Volvo XC90 because we love you. We don't want you, we don't want that to happen, man. I'll give you a big old smooch right on your right on your nose. I want you here, please. Seventh place is going to a, a, the Nissan Xterra, man. I freaking love the Xterra. I think the Xterra is is so slept on in every like every way of the word it's slept on this thing might as well be a five-star hotel because of how much the people sleep on it i like them I, that's pretty much what i'm trying to get at they come with a four liter v6 making 261 horsepower and they're four by fours this is nice little you know nice little 260 horsepower and a little v6 you know a little four by four action and before you're like well it's a nissan so it's probably unreliable well this was made before nissan became unreliable okay this is early 2000s nissan not 2010s nissan this thing is reliable as reliable is going to get you man on top of that i personally really like the looks of the xterra i think it just looks absolutely doshing mate sixth position is going to the chevy tahoe third generation uh like i said before chevy tahoe's and cadillac escalades are pretty much the same thing but this is pretty much the generation after the second gen well, really, obviously that makes sense, but second gen Escalade. Um, it's just newer. It's just better. Unfortunately, you really can't find a third gen Escalade for too cheap right now, which is the reason why we're talking about the Tahoe. Um, but they come with a 4.8 liter V8, making 295 horsepower in its four wheel drive. It is just an absolute reliable beast of a vehicle my uncle had one for like the longest time as his daily driver it got the job done man and on top of that it's one of the newer vehicles on this list too so if you it, realistically people that are looking into buying suvs they do care about things like the interior which makes sense man i'm not judging you man i like nice interiors myself and so if you're if you're looking at like trying to get the newest but cheapest suv dude this is this is one of the best options for you fifth place is kind of a cheat code i don't know if you really count it as an suv it's a subaru forester sg the sg forester these the sg is a second generation forester by the way but they're the foresters in general are kind of like crossovers but when you say crossovers what do you say after that suvs you say it's a crossover suv so in my opinion that still counts as an suv the car comes with a 2.5 liter flat four making 165 horsepower in its all-wheel drive this is one of those vehicles where it can both scratch the need as like a a mom car but also a car guy car you can have a lot of fun with this thing racing it and being fast with it and you know having your fun but you can also have all the space that you would want in an suv most of these other vehicles while they can be fun they're fun in a different way right they're fun because you can take them off road they're fun because you can go wherever you want to go with them whereas the forester you could do that stuff too but you could also do the other side of things where the sports car lowering it on the ground putting some stretch tires on it that type of deal fourth place is going to the second most unreliable vehicle on this list the bmw x3 first generation yeah it's unfortunate man i just wish bmw was like really locking it down in the 2000s man because they're reliable now and unfortunately because of the 2000s because of cars like this people think that they aren't and it's so sad this thing comes with a three liter straight six making 260 horsepower and it's all wheel drive and it looks really good honestly probably one of my favorites on this list in terms of looks as a matter of fact, it you know what? I'm going to say it. It is. It is my favorite in terms of looks. I like BMWs. What can I say? But again, the reliability is definitely questionable. It just freaking sucks, man. Because everybody nowadays thinks that BMW is so bad and nobody should buy them because they're so stupidly unreliable. And the reason why is because of cars like this in the early 2000s, like the M5 E60, you know, things like that made people steer away from them. 
Third place, however, is the king of reliability, Honda. Honda CRV first generation. Um, second gen is good too, but the first gen is just so freaking cool. It's it's another one of those cars where it can scratch both itches, man. If you need a SUV, but you're a car guy that wants to have some fun, this is a good option for you. They come with a two liter inline four making 146 horsepower and they're all wheel drive. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is that not a K series? I'm pretty sure it is. These also do come with manuals. Again, they are kind of a crossover SUV, so they're not like a full-size SUV like most people are probably expecting. So if you need that, then obviously stay away from this. But if you don't and you just need more space rather than just like a whole freaking driving storage container, then this will be fine. And, and it'll be fun. And they look good. They only, they look incredible. They're, they're gorgeous little SUVs. Speaking of gorgeous, one of the newest vehicles on this list, and one that I freaking love the looks of, is the Toyota 4Runner 4th Generation. I've always loved the 4Runners, I don't think there's ever been a 4Runner generation that doesn't look good in my opinion. The newest, which is this one, the 4th Gen, is, you may be thinking, well this was way too new to be cheap man, there's no way you're finding one of these under 7k. It's hard, don't get me wrong, but you can do it. They come with a 4 liter V6, making 245 horsepower in their 4 wheel drive. Again, they're the type of vehicle where it's, uh... They've, they've just been building them for so long that at this point, some of them have made it down to the 7K range. Think about all the 4Runners you see on the road, man. There, it, obviously, there's going to be at least a couple for less than 7 grand. And again, it's a Toyota. It's reliable as hell. 4Runners have proven themselves at this point as being amazing little overlanding vehicles, and they are still big enough to have all the space that you would want. Obviously, they're not fun in the sense of like straight line speed, racing on a track type of fun, but these things, they're fun as hell if you take them, if you know how to use them. But first place... The best SUV for less than $7,000, in my opinion, is the Jeep Cherokee XJ. The XJ Cherokees, they're, they're indestructible, man. You could use these as actual tanks in, the, in World War III is coming. Buy yourself a Cherokee XJ and just, like, have your family rest in the Cherokee XJ, and there's nothing the Russians can do. We'll, we'll be totally safe. They come with a 4-liter inline 6, making 190 horsepower, and it's a 4x4. Legally, uh, I should I should make it obvious that, that 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 is not the case. If World War Three does happen, try and find safe shelter. Don't just sit in a Cherokee XJ. You'll 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 still probably die. But they are reliable. Okay, they're reliable as hell. The four liter straight six is from Jeep. is It's one of the most reliable things ever, and it's really surprising because it came from Jeep. And nowadays, Jeep is just kind of like scary in terms of the reliability. But back, dude, this thing bulletproof my friend had one with 370,000 miles on it drove like bought it with 370,000 miles on it drove it for like 30,000 miles and sold it for with 400,000 miles on the clock someone still bought it with 400,000 miles on the clock why because that person knew that he could still drive the thing it's insane they're they're just they're they're, they're not destructible rust will kill these before the engine will blow but ladies and gentlemen that is the end of today's video of the top 13 best sports utility vehicles for less than seven thousand dollars i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please be sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this let me know what other videos you like to see in the comment section down below um that's pretty much it i don't really have much else to say oh i do have one thing to say do have one thing to say you little big boy i am going to be doing a deep dive again for the first time in like months because uh i was being lazy but i wanted to do one on the volkswagen jetta so i'm hopefully trying to start those back up so let me know what other cars you'd like to see deep dives on pretty much most people are probably just going to say like cars that they want to see a good bad and ugly on but also in deep dive form and that's fine but i just want to know you know i just want to see what you guys are thinking anyway thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate it das Vidania, and have a nice night